we're now going to hear from Lucia um, uh, Jan Saracusa from Italy. She's an Archie Lesbica activist and one of the Italian country contacts for Italy. She's going to present the book, We the Lesbians, female preference and criticism of trans feminism. In particular, Lucia will focus on the concept of false rights, which is one of the many, the many topics covered in the book. So welcome, Lucia, welcome back. This is a book, it's a not big book, and uh, it's titled We the Lesbian, Female Preference and uh, Criticism of Trans Feminism. Uh, it was uh, published very recently in April of uh, this year. I am one of the five authors. Christina, who has just spoken, is uh, another one. We all uh, belong to Archie Lesbica and we are all radical lesbians. The book is in Italian. We would be happy to have it translated in other languages if, is, uh, if someone is willing to do it. Uh, in the book, we outline the debate on gender theory in Italy and the importance of uh, lesbian politics. Uh, in Italy, uh, women's struggle have achieved a lot, legislative equality and opening up of uh, previously unknown option. But uh, we are still far from the equality of in opportunity and full freedom we aspire to. Our achievement uh, frightened men and even some women. When it comes to maintaining their privileges, uh, men stop at nothing. In our society, there is no taboo on violence against women. On the contrary, there is an increased violence against women, which is uh, taking new forms. For instance, the womb for rent, that is an appropriation of the inside of the women's body or gender identity, which allow the occupation of women identity and spaces. Transfeminism authorized a misogynistic attack in a rainbow source. Uh, in the book, we touch uh, upon various topics. We examine the situation of LGBT movement in Italy, assess the glamour surrounding trans, whereas lesbianism tend to be seen as an old fashioned option, explain the basic of gender war and uh, give some personal account uh, on why being a lesbian is important to us. Here, uh, I would like to spend a few words on what in the book we are called false rights, a concept to which we arrived after a, a few years of debate. Archie Lesbica is now 25 years old. Founded in 1996, it has embraced the struggle for homosexual rights while holding on to a legacy of separatism and feminism. Although, in alliance with gay groups in order to obtain equal marriage, it has always been a, a women association run by women. This first period of our history ended with the approval of the civil partnership law in uh, 2016, although even before that, a fault line was beginning to emerge. Starting from surrogacy, we have identified the thread linking the womb for rent, sex work, hormones to minors, the ideology of uh, gender identity, male violence against women, institutional violence against women, and during the COVID period, this expulsion of female labor from the market. They are all part of the current war on women. Discussing and opposing surrogacy, we started to shape the idea of false rights. By false rights, we mean desires of single individuals used by the market to expand its profits. We all know that rights are not a single package given once and for all. Rights have a history and are not always the same in every time and in every society. All rights are the result of intellectual work that conceive them and of social struggles that conquer them little by little and with no guarantee that they are secured forever. 
The history of rights started with the most basic right of the person and then moved on to political rights and social and community rights. But the new rights listed in the Pride Manifestos are, in our opinion, false rights. Talking about false rights is not a quick and simplistic way of dismissing demands that we do not like. It is a critique that highlights the contradictory and acceptable form of these demands, pointing out that, in fact, there are not rights at all. False rights are, de facto, individual desires couched in the language of rights without being right and get their satisfaction in the market offers. A very clear example is that of womb for rent. People want to be parents and talk about the right to have children, which does not exist. Rather, there is a right of babies not to be torn from their mothers and to be cared for. For adults, there is the potentiality to be parents, but not the right to have a baby. Babies are not simply a thing to be owned or sold or bought. Another example. We all have the potential for loving relationship, but not the right to be provided with a lover just because we pine for one. Whenever there is a right, someone or something, generally the state, has duties. As it happens, for instance, with the right to education. In this case, the state has to provide schools, teachers, scholarship for the right to become practicable. practicable. But in the case of parenthood, there should be women to provide children. Thus, women would be used as mean of production or in a more general sense, as a mean to other people's ends. In the case of forced rights, the fulfillment is to be found in the market. And the state simply has to make it possible with specific legislation. So the very formal structure of false rights is far from that of real rights. The LGBT movement, the transfeminist movement are full of requests of full rights. In Italy, the claim seeped into the Pride platform immediately after the approval of civil partnership in 2016, as if they were the next generation type of rights. In this way, human bodies first and foremost uh, women's body become the raw material of the market, we, uh, of a market which is no longer satisfied with our labor. So we oppose the widening of the exploitation that is produced by the womb for land and prostitution, which are actually structurally and symbolically similar. Women liberation is not to be found uh, by following the path of the body's mind and I sell it as I please. Yet, it is precisely this individualistic stance that transfeminism and queer ideology pedal to new generation as uh, of activist. Transfeminism is an apparently transgressive theory, but it fosters a culture and material appropriation of women. It also denies that experience such as motherhood, lesbianism, and the women movement are strictly female. Transfeminism considers consumer choice as agency without taking into consideration the structural context in which choices are made. It is an extreme formalism. Any action that does not take place under an obvious physical threat is considered to be free. So harrowing choices like prostitution are seen as free and uh, women who make them as emancipated especially if those choices are those traditionally considered unseemly. Transfeminists consider them transgressive. But what is less subversive than a woman being prostituted a man buying the right to rape her? Trans activists look at prostitution through men's eye and do not see that prostitution is rape paid for. We maintain that there are two diverging worldviews, the feminist one and the individualistic and queer one. 
A clear example is the opposing definition of the concept of gender and gender identity. So we hope to have numerous presentations of our book. This is because for us, this book is a political tool, a way to clarify complex and contentious topic. Uh, we are willing to debate with anyone because we know our reasons are strong. Unfortunately, our adversaries tend to shrink from public debate and they prefer tactics, tactics is uh, to silence women. So while invitation are refused, intimidation and insults fill social networks. Just a small example of what is happening. We have given a complimentary book to the LGB bookshop in Milan, which a young man owns it, decided to call it uh, Antigone. But he told us, even before reading it, that they would not keep it in the shop, simply because it was written by archi lesbic activists. And I would like to say something on the title. Uh, we decided to title the book, We the Lesbians, because other homosexual women do not use this word any longer. They think it's too old and not inclusive enough. We happily use this word for ourselves as a political statement, and uh, this gives us a constituent power, that of declaring ourselves and being the lesbian subject, which others fear to or dismiss. We are certain that uh, the strength of this affirmation will be attractive for many other lesbians. This is a foothold we can use to live our lives and possibly change the world. We are female by birth. We are women who do not accept the normative genders of patriarchal culture. Our rebellion against genders and their norms does not prevent us from loving our bodies and those of our women. It does not push us to change the body, but to change society and culture. Luckily, there is a growing number of voices raised locally and internationally to defend women and lesbians, despite the attack of gender activists. And this book tried to be one of the, these voices. Thank you. The idea of false rights, is this an idea that has a historical basis that comes from other books and other ideas? Uh, I haven't really heard about it. Um, so where did you get the idea from and, and does it, has it, it, does it fit in with other bits of, of theory? Well, I think it's a bit of the product of our discussion. We have been discussing uh, this problem, as you see, all the, the problem interconnect. So we have started uh, in uh, 2016, I think, more or less with the debate on uh, surrogacy. And uh, it was a very, uh, a very strong debate, very deep and even violent in, in some way within our association, because Archie Lesbica basically in that period sort of split into two on the issue of surrogacy. And um, so we had to start thinking of what it was happening, uh, why people that uh, work with us for years and years, even some of our uh, friends in the association, uh, started to think in a way that for us was almost incomprehensible. So the, 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 really the, the difference started then in Italy for us started on surrogacy. But I think really uh, all the other topics, the type of reasoning is the same. It's a neoliberalist uh, approach, individualistic, queer, whatever you want to call it, or a more feminist and radical approach. We saw that basically uh, uh, this worked for everyone. Personally, there was a book that was uh, very important to sort of click some of the thing for me, but it doesn't talk about false right as such. That I think is our product. Uh, was freedom fallacy was a, a called freedom fallacy and is an anthology and uh, with the different uh, um, uh, which analyze different topics and I thought that was the idea of fallacy 
in in uh, that was translated uh, in falso in Italian, therefore false rights. No. So and, in a um, way that Lu was helpful. Lucia, do you have is this that you, your organization Archie Lesbica has been meeting uh, in person for the last 20 years are you an organization that's carried on meeting and thinking and how does that happen yeah. because we what... have a real organization not a digital organization <laughs> we've been uh, well some of us uh, i for instance worked in a lesbian movement for over 40 years i don't care even to think how long and uh, then uh, i met for instance christina even before we founded archie lesbica and um, and then in 1996, uh, Archie Lesbica was founded. We always uh, meet in person because it is a um, national organization. Therefore, we meet in each town where there is a what we call a circle or a group in each uh, in the town where uh, the, the the women decided, the lesbian decided to uh, congregate. And then we had uh, uh, national meetings. And we have a, a national uh, group, like a steering committee, that speak uh, for for the for the whole um, association. Although each town has got the the freedom to organize whatever they want within a framework, and this framework is given by a written document. Uh, which is approved every three years in a Congress, so what we call a, a general assembly. And so it was in the, um, in the preparation of the uh, written uh, uh, document of uh, our Congress in uh, 2017 that we started to put this idea together. Then since then, obviously, <laughs> We always, always met and discussed this topic. We read books together. We, well, I suppose we, the, our um, most, uh, our idea of, of fun is uh, meeting on Sunday afternoon and discuss. And <laughs> so, okay. 